Hey guys, tonight we're talking about Rolexes that are starting to hit the shelves. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Thursday. Uh, Hello. Hello who, everyone. Who is this? Wait. Racing my, my... This is not Joshua Thanos. Thank you uh, for logging in. Jason Main, I am back. I know you guys missed me last week. Uh, I was in Florida camping. Um, couldn't be here. I was on the chat. I don't know if you guys caught me. Uh, so this week, Josh is not here. He's still in Florida. Decided to bring back a uh, repeat co-star. Um, Peter Bell. Peter Bell. The one and only. How's everybody doing out there? Good. Thanks so, for tuning in. Why don't you give Appreciate us a little it. bit of... Uh, I know you, everybody saw you the first time. I don't know if everybody remembers who you are. Tell yeah, us what you do. You know, one of the senior tenured salesmen there... Um, not only in age, but also for longevity as well. And I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you have seen me before. I've been on a couple shows before when they needed me, and if not, I'm at the the main office uh, holding down the fort, so to speak. And glad to be on here and see everybody out there again. And we're gonna have a great show today. So stay with us, and we'll get it going. Fantastic. All right. Well, listen. Before we roll into our customary wrist shots, we have uh, something kind of. Um, special so we're going to throw up this graphic that we have made up here for those of you that don't know um the horological society of new york uh in hong kong is coming up that's something that uh is going to be hosted by us by watchbox and uh it's uh, june 8th through 9th so if you find yourself in hong kong this is really cool we've done a few in other places as well but this is basically gives you the ability uh there is a link in the box below in the description but this gives you the ability to sign up for this um, take some watchmaking classes, really uh, get involved in the hobby that you love in kind of a different and very cool kind of way. So for the guys that really like uh, Mike Michael shows, you know, with the getting into the watchmaking or can appreciate, um, you know, what goes behind the art, then that's that's pretty awesome. You know, yeah, I'm not going to be in Hong Kong, but unfortunately, I, I would probably, we're not going to uh, be there. Yeah, I would probably uh, sign up for that if I could. Yeah, so. it's going to be a great event. So definitely check it out if you are in the area or if, uh, if you're going to be in the area. Yeah, I think definitely this is worthwhile. our second one, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Her, but definitely super worthwhile. cool event. So check it out. If nothing else, click the link in the bottom to see what it's about because uh, pretty cool. Yep. So. All right. Um, so we do the customary wrist checks. We're yep. going to talk about uh, basically what we decided to wear today. So I have uh, liberated this from the watch box. I got this a couple months ago, um, on and off. I, I wore it for like three or three weeks straight and then took it off, put the sub back on. But uh, for those of you that are enjoying our podcast and cannot look at the screen, this is the Rolex 216570 Polar, so the white dial variant with the orange GMT hand. It's a 42 millimeter current generation. Um, absolutely love this thing. Uh, very, very nice uh, stark contrast between the black outer rings and the white dial, which really popped. And that's kind of what made me fall in love with the watch. Um, also, one thing you don't really see about this watch, um, unless you own it, is it has this really cool blue loom instead of some of the other uh, yeah. variants. So at night, it's a pleasure to wear as well as during the day. GMT hand, um, don't really travel much. Uh, travel between here and Florida, which is the same time zone. Right. So mm -hmm. definitely needed to own a GMT for that reason. But I uh, couldn't be happier with the watch. It fits my wrist really well. It's comfort and pleasure to wear. You're going to need that blue hue, though, going back and forth yeah. to Florida. So tell us what you're, uh, what you're wearing. Yep, here. I'm wearing my everyday uh, IWC Ingenieur 3227 on the bracelet. Very nice. I just got it back from uh, my IWC watchmaker uh, connection. Uh, fully serviced, polished. Uh, you know, I'm really admiring it because I forgot, you know, I actually, when I first put it on, I'm like, man, I didn't realize how much I missed it until I wore it for a couple of days. And then, you know, when you get it back and it's, it's one of the watches that you, uh, you purchased, um, you know, because you liked it to begin with, you know, it's always great to gaze back onto the dial and it's like gazing into an old lover's eyes <laughs> and, uh, it actually looks blue at times. So it, it gives off a, a blue and black, uh, tint and, um, just excited to have it back. So. Yeah, banging so, it up a little bit on the on the drawers and the and the desk a little bit, but that's what it's for. It's a tool yeah. watch, literally like, in the definition of the name. But exactly. yeah, yeah. Uh, very cool. Kind of um, can be a very staple watch in somebody's yeah. collection too. Yeah, it's, it's got a little it's bit automatic, of automatic sapphire crystal. It's obviously from a yeah. great house, so kind it's of got cool. a little bit of meat to it. You know, what everyday I mean? so, watch. Yep. Yeah, awesome, fantastic. All right, rolling along. We have uh, very cool top five for you guys pulled up. 
trending watches look at that graphic best in the industry guys that must be why we got all those followers going look at that so uh peter here's where we uh talk about the top five watches clicked on the website this week right uh, yeah so basically we get an idea of what's trending what people are looking at so uh, we'll start this off with uh, number five there. We'll go in this order. So that's the uh, the Richard Mill. That's the RM10, yep. right? Yeah, uh, good representation so. right across the board of, of our portfolio. Uh, you know, Richard Mills continue to be popular. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously, you know, the supply and demand of, of, you know, Mills and Rolex, a lot of demand, not much, not much supply out there these days. Um, so, um, you know, people are still interested in, you know, finding that affordable Richard Mill and that's, you know, anything under a hundred thousand these days in the Richard Mill category is, is a, is a bargain. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so the RM10, you know, you generally when the RMs are on the website, they get clicked on this piece here, uh, listed at 89,950, uh, titanium rubber strap, very attractive kind of basic RM in terms of, uh, aesthetic. It's not like crazy and out there with the colors. Yep. So I can see why guys would click on this because it's uh, it's very wearable. Right. So the, yeah, the dial's not as busy as some of the other mills out there. Well, uh, yeah, and then you know, basic titanium and black, so relatively uh, every day. I guess if you're the type of guy that every day is an RM10. Right. 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 Uh, so number four, right? We're gonna uh, date just Rolex date just listed at 4350, 36 millimeter piece. Um, usually, you know, in the top five, we usually see one of these. Basically, I think what this, wh where this comes from is guys looking for sub $5,000 stainless steel Rolex. Correct. Right. So you always get, you know, kind of that date just in there, uh, whether or not it's a 34 or 36, um, just because people are clicking on them to see them, but that's how they make them into our top five usually. Plus, I mean, the date just, if you look at it, pretty decent value. They, they always kind of sell, they trade. Um, so yeah, uh, stainless steel watch under five grand Rolex yeah, on the great, dial. You know? Great, great value in, in a Rolex, you know, under 5,000, even better, closer to four, uh, classic dial, clean, um, good everyday watch, uh, you know, where to work, not, not too flashy. So, um, you have seen an uptick in, in the interest in these types of pieces, uh, lately. So, um, it's always good to see them up there on the board. Yeah, and uh, now with all the stuff that we're seeing, uh, the sport models selling really hard and, and getting harder and harder to get, a lot of this other stuff is starting to, you know, all what we talk about with Josh all the time, like all boats rise. It truly is, you know, these stainless steel pieces are going for the ride. So right. um, a great alternative to that at a much better price point, I would say, is number three. So we have here uh, Omega C Mas uh, Speedmaster, rather, excuse me, uh, racing chronograph. So this is the smaller racing variant, not your standard Speedmaster size, uh, twenty nine fifty. So saving some change from the, from the date just right. Uh, right. Automatic chronograph, stainless steel, sapphire crystal. Kind of hard to go wrong if you can wear this thirty millimeter, thirty nine millimeter size. That's a great everyday watch. Yeah, it's not a, it's it's not a bad piece. I mean, you know, great value in Omega. Uh, again, like Jason said, under under three dollar or under three thousand. Excuse me. Um, you know, it's got a lot going on. Chronograph. Um, you know, if you don't have an Omega in the collection, it certainly is something that you could pick up as an everyday wear. I mean, it's been to the moon, guys, you know? Right, so. right, to the moon and back. Well, that one specifically raced to the moon and back because it's the racing edition, huh. but, you know. All right, so number two, uh, I would say probably, you know, the most iconic watch uh, up there in terms of uh, the hype for the market right now. Well, maybe the RM, but the Hulk. Everybody knows the Hulk, right? This watch... Uh, is probably one of the most talked about uh, kind of fad or hype watches on the market right now. The all green 116610 LV, right? The uh, green on green, Hulk is mad. That watch is gone up, uh, gone down a little bit and up a little bit, um, but it hasn't been higher in recent history. Um, extremely sought after, not really being delivered anymore. Surprise it's not number one, I would say, on, on the list uh, because when they go up, they sell pretty quickly. Don't know if that's even still available. I didn't check to see if going live, if they were still on the website. But uh, any impressions on the Hulk? What do you What do you think of that? I mean, I loved it since the day it came out. Um, and you know, just like you were saying, you know, just when we thought it had leveled off, there was a renewed interest yep. again in it. Um, again, that you don't see much supply out there, uh, and the demand continues to rise. So uh, we thought it would level off at some point, but you know it's it's good for the watch uh, the watch world that. Um, yeah. Listen, if you own a Hulk, couldn't get better, right? I mean, right. Um, 
So one of the things uh, with this top five, it's, it's actually pretty spread out, which is uh, usually uh, there's been a couple where it's like four Rolexes and one other watch. I think this is pretty diverse, and uh, this is a true top five. We didn't, you know, obviously didn't doctor this at all. So uh, number one here, we have the, uh, you know, the, obviously the Aquanaut, which is, this is the smaller piece, but this is listed for sixteen nine fifty. Um, more of a midsize, I would say, smaller gentleman type watch. Uh, definitely for your wife if she's into watches. Um, you know, if you're a smaller guy and you know that you can normally pull off like a 34 millimeter watch, this might be for you, especially at that price point because you can get a very iconic, you know, style and shape of piece for a relatively inexpensive. Um, right. Based I on what we're talking about, but pretty iconic, the Aquanaut. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, at the price point at sixteen, I think you know people are clicking on it. They see a Patek Philippe for sixteen thousand, right? Especially um, that case shape, you know? right? Right. So if, if you could pull off that that smaller size, um, you know, it's a good buy. It's still a way to get into that category, which, as we know, is exploding as well. Yeah. That. So good piece. You know, listen, it's it's a it's a nice piece. Like I said, if you're in the market for a mid size watch, if you think you can pull it off, there's really no risk to purchasing it. Obviously, the uh, you know the larger fifty one sixty four is the one everybody wants. Um, what do you think of the Aquanaut altogether? Do you have a preference over the Nautilus or the Aquanaut? I mean, I'm kind of a Nautilus guy. Are I you? think when I first okay. got into watches, I, I, I loved uh, the Aquanaut. Mm -hmm. But I think as you get more educated and, you, and your you know, your tastes uh, become more refined, I think that you naturally, as a watch person, you gravitate towards you know the Nautilus. That's interesting. So I yep. actually have the opposite. Of, I would you know respectfully disagree, but. Um, I have the opposite. I've always loved the Aquanaut better than the Nautilus, and I mm -hmm. think that most people, especially nowadays because of how hot the Nautilus is, start there. Right. And then, one, it's it's what's available, so generally you'll find more Aquanauts than Nautilus, right? Um, and then, two, it's what, you know, so one, it's what can you get, and two, it's how do you justify the difference in the money. Right. And I think a three-hand Aquanaut's much easier to justify a secondary market than a Nautilus. And I just, I've always kind of liked the Aquanaut case shape a little bit better to me on the wrist it makes more sense but M more obtainable like you I said like, so i like both watches i just i've always been an aquanaut guy uh so yeah e that, either uh, or is fine and right and they're both today's. great i think that i think they are different enough that if you're a true paddock guy uh, you can justify owning both if that's what you want but uh yeah so that's our top five um like i said kind of different spread Good representation, uh, you get to see though. Kind of what's being clicked on. Um, top five has always been pretty well received by the viewing audience. So, uh, you know how you can help us, uh, ch you know, change the top five is go into the website, click on a bunch of stuff, read read the descriptions, let us know. Um, that's how we get, honestly we weed out a lot of like listing errors that way. People are you know contact us, say hey this is wrong, whatever. Right. Super helpful because uh, you know there's a lot of content up there. So, but anyhow, we appreciate it. We're moving right along. This is something uh, that I'm super excited for. So kind of the, the meat and potatoes of the show. I uh, met with a customer today who uh, travels basically all over the country, um, is on a list from a bunch of different places, brought two watches in for me to see and size for him. Um, and they were super exciting. I didn't even know what they were when he brought them in, but uh, kind of uh, laid the groundwork for what today's show is going to be mm -hmm. is... Um, all these Rolexes from Basel are hitting. Yes, You know, finally. we're starting to see them. And I was able to uh, put two of these watches on my wrist, get first impressions. Here you have the new 43 millimeter. Uh, so what you guys know, the previous generation was the red line, Seed Weller with stainless steel. This is the new 43 millimeter two-tone. Um, so I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, um, you know, down a little bit. It used to be about seven and a half. Uh, so this 43, I think, works pretty well in the two-tone. I was a little skeptical when I saw the release of why they would do a two-tone. I'm not entirely, still not entirely sure why we need a big 43 millimeter dress watch, but it is pretty. And I will say similar to how the root beer, the, the gold is very understated. This one as well. It's just barely two-tone. So it's got a good look on the wrist. I think that this watch would look really, really nice on a strap with the two-tone accents around the bezel and the crown. Um, if you, I guess, have the cojones to take a stainless, you know, uh, bracelet off of a Rolex, uh, that might work. But um, did you see? Did you see that forty three when it yeah, came in? Yeah, you're you're absolutely right about it. I mean, the jury's still out on it, uh, and only time will tell. You know, if it's embraced. But I mean, it's a pretty cool look in that size. You know, black's always in, and uh, I think it's a great line extension for them. But again, time will tell if uh, if people embrace it and and. Uh, Put it yeah. on the wrist. 
So no. this piece, I, I was that piece, I was more surprised that I actually liked it because I, I had just written it off. Um, but I, I did like the watch on the wrist. The next piece here that we're gonna see, this is the brand new uh, white gold yacht master in uh, what can only be described as gargantuan case size. It is a big watch, um, but almost to the point where it's pretty awesome. I actually like this watch a lot more than I thought it would. The only thing that concerns me with this is lug to lug on, you know, across the wrist is, is very large. Uh -huh. uh, but it does have that uh, the markers. If you look at the hour markers all the way around are, are also exaggerated. They're very big markers, bigger than any other Rolex. Um, the bezel on this thing, I think we have a, I don't know if we have a promo shot. I think we pulled a promo shot for the, for the uh, front of the video, like the, uh, the picture. But... The bezel on this thing, this picture doesn't do it any justice. It's like a matte black, like phantom black. It's really, really nice. Um, I wish Rolex would have fixed the Oyster Flex on these guys. Right. It's about time to admit that the Oyster Flex is a flawed system, I think, and kind of fix that. Right. But, you know, such as Rolex, we kind of roll with what they give us. Um, I actually, between these two pieces, I was more impressed with the... 43 millimeter two-tone. Really? I was, it was the opposite for me, because when I saw the, the Yacht Master, it was, it was very striking. Like, you're right, it doesn't do it justice to the picture. Yeah. Like, but, but when you have it on your wrist, it is something, like, to behold, because it, My, it, yeah. it, it something new, you know what I mean? That they, it's, you know, it's a foray into something right. a little Right, it's a new different. case, which is, is cool. My, what I'm saying, the reason I was more shocked that I liked the two-tone. Like, going into this, I knew I was going to like this piece. Right. But I knew it was going to be big, but... Listen, it's it's a pretty watch, and aesthetically, it'd be something that I would lean more towards. So I knew that I was going to like it. Right. What? I had already written off the two tone. Really? You know, I, I was already done with it before I even saw it. So the fact that I put it on my wrist, and I was like, oh, you and know what? what? Actually, it's pretty what, nice. What changed your mind though on it? it? You know. Um. You know, I don't. I don't know too much. I I really like the gold uh, on the dial. You know, like so they they didn't do the red. They did the gold sub uh, Sea Dweller logo. I think it's pretty. Um. If I was going to own that watch, though, I do think I would take it off that bracelet. Interesting. Yeah. And uh -huh. then I also got a report. Um, I don't have a photo of it because I didn't actually see it in person, but I did get a report from a client of mine who just picked up, and they are delivering the new Batman on a Jubilee bracelet. Oh, nice. So uh, we've definitely, I've seen one sale on the market already at 25, uh, which is crazy, but right. it is the market. Yep. Um, I have seen, uh, I have been pitched one already. So there's another guy who got one, asked me what I would pay for it already. So we already got one pitched. So now right. we know about two of them that are out there. And I did hear from another customer who just picked one up and was supposed to send me a wrist shot, but didn't. And, uh, that's why it's not on the show yet. But, right. um, so that's three confirmed today. Uh, so we know that they're being delivered. Right. So if you're on a list for any of these three watches uh, at Call your us. local AD, <laughs> Call um, us right away. I would expect to uh, you know, eventually get a, f a phone call from your AD soon. So uh, I don't know. I found that interesting. You know, we talk about, we come on here, we talk about the Rolex bubble, uh, which these definitely affect. We come on here and we talk about, will it ever pop? We come in here and we talk about, you know. Or when will it ever right. pop? Right. And then, right. so these are, this is actually happening now. These watches are delivering. Uh, you know, we had one of our best shows ever was the Basel show where we talked about the new product. Well, guess what? It's here. So I thought right. that was super exciting. Yeah, I mean, and, it, uh, I mean, it's great to when you know Basel happens, we get all those phone calls. Hey, do you have this? You have right. that? And it's like now we won't see it for six months, but it is exciting that they're finally starting to come around where we could actually you know get them into our hands or on our wrists and uh, make it available to some of the others out there that didn't have an opportunity to maybe order it or, or want to see it or are intrigued by it. So it's, yeah, it's good. Absolutely. It's a good time uh, of year. Just caught my attention in the comments. Uh, one almost said he just saw a uh, BLNR on Jubilee sell for 22.5. Yeah, man. Mm. Uh, so I heard 25 wow. on one. I would assume 22.5 is uh, probably a pretty solid sale. 23, 24 will probably happen until the market stabilizes. Uh, and it'll probably end up setting somewhere like 21, 22, I think. Yeah, but, I think I, you'll see a spike, and I think as they become available, you know, again, supply demand, uh, just you know, a couple out there probably could go into the high twenties. But I, you're right; I think it's going to level off once the, you know, the feeding frenzy ends, so to speak, and and uh, more supply is available on the market. 
you'll see the prices come down slowly like some of the other ones. Yeah, but, well, so, and then we're also going to see uh, what does that do to the Oyster because it's already raised the discontinued Batman on the Oyster bracelet. Correct. Since it was announced, that watch has gone up from being right. discontinued. The black variation uh, has gone up. You know, pretty much all the discontinued pieces inevitably go up. Um, so we'll see. Does now that these are being delivered, I think uh, people will make up their mind when they see what, what it actually looks like on the wrist. Um, I think that the Batman on the Jubilee would be better received than the Pepsi was on the Jubilee. Hmm. But time will tell. All right, guys. Right. Anything else you want to say to the, no, I mean, to the just, millions and millions of viewers that we have on the show? I, I mean, just to, I mean, it's an exciting time, I think, in the watch world, especially with, with the Rolex and, you know, the line extensions. It, it's a good thing. I mean, we wish that the prices would stabilize a little bit, you know, so that we would have some uh, some clarity or some stability. But, you know, we, you know, again, supply and demand, I hate to keep saying it. Like, I took a class in college, uh, economics, and I never saw the really the effects of supply and demand until the, until this the started happening. Yeah. yeah, until this started happening. And it's get calls every day, talk to people, and it's like, man, it's, it's it just, you know, continues to do it, you know, get more exciting every day, right? Yep, for so. sure. So, listen, guys, I, I want to first, uh, you know, let you know that I appreciate you guys logging in. And watching myself and Peter do the show, I know you probably logged in thinking uh, you were going to watch Thanos, but he's not here. I do want to say, uh, you know, a little bit of call to action here. Like the video, please. A lot of guys watch it and don't like it. Two, definitely comment on the video because we like to go in and read all those comments. And then three, we're at 79,000 and change. I think it's like 79.2. Yep. I need 80,000. All right. Uh, next week, hopefully we're close to 80. Right. Subscribe, over that threshold. send a link to your grandmother, tell her to subscribe. She's not going right. to know what it means, but it doesn't matter. Just click on it, mama. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right? Well, um, so 80000 next week. Please. Uh, let's make that a mission. And uh, let us know. Write in the comments. What do you guys want to see on next week's show? Uh, we're starting to, you know, need some ideas. Right. So yeah, appreciate the feedback. You know, you know, tell us what you think. It's should I nix Peter good. from the next show? Do you like you him? Want to What's see me going back. on? You want to see me back, I'm sure. If if we bring Peter on the next show, we'll bring a bottle of whiskey. And we'll have Not a good as time. pretty as Thanos, but uh, you know, I'm a funnier. All right. right? Thanks, guys. Uh, Thanks. Hopefully, thank uh, hopefully this video makes it home and uh, you can drive home and listen to it on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great holiday weekend. Bye.